Good morning, everybody. This is Lynn, and I wanted to um, try to video for you a, a card that I made recently and put on the Stamper Swap Shop and Sell site. And um, my friend Teresa said, "Oh, can how did you make that? How did you color that in?" And I was like, "Well, I I don't really know how to tell you, so I'll just do a video if that help is helpful." And she said it would be so. This is hopefully going to be a quick one, but um, the video, or the card, excuse me, was made um, in, in 10 minutes. Maybe not the actual card, but the painting. I did two of these panels like this in 10 minutes. Now, I did this one on video the other day. That's why it already has some um, embossing on it, but then the video, when I rewatched it, it was messed up. The camera kept going in and out, and so I thought, well, I'm going to do it again. So I had made two of these. Now I'm down to one, and um, I'm going to show you how I painted it um, very, very quickly, but it's effective, and you don't have to be so particular about uh, coloring things in just so, because it really just doesn't matter. They still will make beautiful cards. So these are the cards that I made out of it at two panels. As I said, it was two panels. These are very large. These are about uh, six, there's six by eight. So it's way too big for a card. Um, so I cut it up each one into two panels and I think I even had some little pieces left over. So I can't even tell you which, I, I, would, I, I would assume maybe these two were one panel. Um, because all the flowers, no, that's not even it, because it's these two were one panel, and then these two made up another panel. So you can see that the colors on them are just very different. It's not, the flowers, I, I just did different things on each of the flowers. So, um, so we're gonna do that today. What you'll need is an image of some sort that, um, uh, has a lot of bold outlines to it so that you have a lot of area to color. You'll need um, a paint, a watercolor brush. This one is a six round. I like it because it is kind of big and it does cover a lot of space easily. You'll need some water. Um, mine is, and the first video was clean. It's a little dirty now, but I'm not getting up to change it out because people are still sleeping in my house. And the other thing you'll need are um, some ink refills, or what I'm using today are these uh, watercolor brushes that are full of pigment. It's very, very vibrant, and that's why I like to use these. I don't, I don't use them the traditional way most of the time. I usually squirt some onto my um, white mixing plate here, glass plate, and use them that way, but you can do them directly onto the paper and then move the uh, water around with your paintbrush. It's just up to you, and I might try it both ways just to show you. Um, but I have a little can with a bunch of colors in this, and I'm not gonna be real particular about the colors I use because you don't have to be. You can use whatever kind of colors that you want. They don't have to actually be floral colors um, because as you see, I did some pinks and oranges up here, but I did the cool colors down here with the uh, blues and the purple. Um, you know, my leaves, I did paint green, but you don't have to. You could do them any color that you want. So it's just kind of, it's wild and funky, but you're going to be cutting this panel up anyway. And so it's going to look, it's going to look great no matter what you do, no matter what kind of color combinations you come up with. I think it's going to look really good. You could do very dull and muted colors, or you could do very bright colors. I tend to lean toward the brighter colors, but really you do you. And I think you'll be happy with it. What I did with this one when I was done was I did go on here and put some script and embossed it in white and I splattered some white paint on it. Um, but you don't have to. This image I had splattered some black paint and you can see some lighter spots here. That's where I splattered some water and then soaked up some of the color so it would have some lighter spots on it. This panel has black splatter on it. This panel had white splatter on it. So I did this after they were cut up so that each card is kind of its own thing. And then this panel, 
this piece had nothing done to it. It didn't have any light spots. It didn't have any dark spots. It's just as it was painted. So you, you have a lot of variety there, okay? So I encourage you just to try this and be free with your painting. Don't think about doing it very specifically. Don't think about your highlights, your lowlights, your uh, whatever. Just slap the color on and then, um, yeah, turn it into something fun. And uh, I'll give credit where credit's due. I'm, I'm pretty sure that Sharon White is the one that taught me um, kind of how to do this or showed me when she was at my house last year for our stamp camp. Uh, but it's really fun and it's kind of freeing to just throw the color out there, okay? So with that said, I'm going to grab some colors out and uh, we'll start with just one flower right now. And... This is a sun-kissed color. This one is a Jane Davenport. It's it's the only pink I really have, so I'm going to pull that one out. And, um, of course, you need yellow for the centers. And we're going to just start on one flower right now. And I'm looking for, I don't know if I'll find it quickly enough, a, it's an orange that I really like from, Altenu. Um but I never can find it because their caps don't have the color on the top. You have to dig through them to find it. We'll start with this for right now, and then I'll come back to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my watercolor brush and load it up with some water, and I'm going to start with, begin with this flower, and sometimes you just really have to load up a good bit of water, and I am going to just get it wet. Now this image is, uh, I stamped it in black and then I put clear heat embossing over it to give it just a little bit of a raised edge. Now that's not critical to do that because in this painting we're not going to be really particular about staying in each of those lines like you would if you were working with um, zigs or something like that. You'd try to paint it more particular. And if you can see over here I'm just putting some color down of several colors here. So I have some color to grab very quickly with my, my paintbrush. And my pink's getting low, so let's see what we've got here. Okay, so I'm gonna begin in the middle and I'm just gonna put some color out there. Now with the yellow, sometimes you, you'll just come back with your pen later and put it directly to the paper because you want to get more vibrancy there since yellow is a lighter color. And I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna pick up some of the next color. And I, you can see here, I, I actually put it on this flower. It doesn't, it just doesn't matter that much. And I'm gonna come in and pick up some of the pink, get a little bit brighter color. You can see how quickly I'm doing this. And I'm, I'm pretty sure when, when Sharon showed me doing some of this kind of stuff, she did it much neater than I do it, but that's okay. Um, as I said, you do you, okay? So you can see I've come around here and I'm not even worried about, oh, was that a flower, was that not a flower? Because I want it to be outside of the lines over here some so I can maximize the use of cutting up this card. Um, I'm going to go back. This is, I haven't, I don't think I've tried this in my card. This is some Jane Davenport also and it's a red. And because I want to get a little bit more vibrant color in there, I'm going to pick up some red and try it and see if I like it. It does add a little more oomph to it. The other thing you could do is totally pick up another color. What I've used here are warm colors, but you could actually add, as I did on this one, I added a cool color to it. I added some purple to it. And that's, that's fine, too. I might do that on another flower here in a minute. Okay. So I want to add more orange. And what I'm going to do just to show you on this particular one is I'm going to just come in directly with the marker and just show you how to add that in there and, and blend it back into some of the red colors. Okay. Same with the center and let your center bleed out into some of the other colors too, okay? That is one flower done. 
now we're going to come down to this one and let's use um, let's use some cooler colors on this one. Let's do something a little different. Um, we've got some blues. I'll put a little blue down. That is also a Jane Davenport. Um, I just grab I just grab what I grab. I don't really care what brand it is. This is another Jane Davenport. We'll put a little of that blue down. Let's see if I can find a... I guess I, I tend to grab those because they're the ones I can actually see the color of. They have the color on the lid. This is an Altenew. It's a purple wine. It's a really pretty color. I'm afraid I'm getting off screen by... This one doesn't want to squeeze out very good. I might have to use that one directly. I don't want to be off screen, but let's see. We're going to clean out this brush a little bit. Put some water down again. And you can see a hint of color still in it. It, it doesn't matter. Okay. Now we're going to come back and let's start with some purple. Again, I'm just going to have to use the because it, it's just not it's not it's not coming out. And if you'll notice, I did not do the um, yellow yet. I will come back and do that directly to the center. And then I'm going to pick up a little blue. And a little darker blue. I think I'm going to go back and get a little bit more of the wine color. And just blend it back out again to, to pull those colors together, okay? And little white spots like that are okay. Uh, sometimes I, I get crazy with color and I tend to forget to put them on there. And then when you start splattering and using um, script over places, you get your white spots. So I, I, don't, I don't stress on that too much. Okay, and I'm just going to come back and color some of this in and bleed it out just a little bit, okay? Now we're gonna come to the last flower. I do the flowers first, generally. This one, make sure we're still in screen. And let's see, let's, um, let's start with a lighter purple. We'll mix cool and warm colors together here. So, this is a um, another Jane Davenport jellyfish, jellyfish, not this. We'll put a little purple on there. Um, let's see, put some. See, these colors are gonna be a lot lighter um, which is okay, as I said, you're, you're cutting this card up, it's, it's not going to matter that much, so. And, uh, I put red on there, but I don't, I don't want red. Let me go back and find another color. I really want that one color that I just cannot locate. It's, a. Uh, Maybe this one will be pretty. This one's crimson. Let's try this. That's not the color I was looking for, but it's an all to new color. Let's see. So you look at this and you'll be like, oh, I don't like I don't like that purple in there. That's okay. You can you can add more color to it. I could go back and put some blues in there or whatever, but because I want to show what this will look like regardless. It's going to still look really cool. Um, I'm going to leave I'm going to leave some purple in there, okay? We just darken it up a little bit and try to blend some of this out, okay? 
So next I'm going to come in with my yellow, if I can find it again, here it is, and just do my center like this. All right, next we're going to be on to the leaves, and as I said, leaves don't have to be green. You can do whatever colors you want, but I'm going to use my green colors. I'm going to use Limeade because those of you who watch my videos know that green is my favorite favorite color. <laughs> so I always want to get green in here, especially this limey type color. And I am just going to very quickly, I want to make sure my brush is pretty cleaned out, go in here and add some lime. Again, I am not going for perfection. I'm just laying some color down. I don't care if I get out of the lines. I'm trying to be free this morning. Let me just color some directly on because they didn't want to squeeze out that good. Hope I'm in the frame for everybody. So this lime color is is pretty light, but part of it was because I was the way I was putting it on. All right, and then. I'm going to come back and pick up a little bit brighter green. I will squeeze some of this out. It seems to come out a little easier. And I'm just going to come back in and put some highlights into the, the greens that I've already painted. So you can see it's, it's not perfect. It's got colors that bled over. I don't care. It doesn't matter. And I've come back with one other color green. I'm just, ooh, it came out. A lot of it came out. And I'm just going to go back and add a tiny bit more green accent. This is more like an emerald green. My brush is so wet that it's, um, and the paper is pretty wet, it's just going to automatically um, bleed out and roam around, roam around that image, okay? And when you mess up like that, you just do that because it really doesn't matter if it's messed up, all right? Now, it would be good if I just took time and let this dry a little bit because my greens are still pretty wet. Let me just try to dab up some of them for purpose of time. As long as I keep moving the napkin around, it won't spread green onto other spots that I don't want. The last thing I'm going to do on this image is I'm very loosely going to color in the last of the white space. You could leave it. You could color it another color. I have seen Sharon White color red in there, and I, I would have never thought of doing that, but she does it quite often, and it looks really, it looks really nice. Um, so you can see I'm going on the outside of the image too. The purpose of that is simply to give me a little bit more space when I cut these up if I, um, when I cut it up, if I need some of that space to get two cards out of it, then I will have extra color out there. This card is an example. You can see where I put some blue on the outside of the flowers. It's not here. I still like it like that. It's okay, but I did put some blue on the outsides of the flowers. And that's just simply for, as I said, the purpose of cutting it up. You can see that I'm doing this very quickly. I am not going for perfection. I'm just putting color down and Oops, I did go into my paints there. Oh, well. Um, into the interior. All the way around here, we're going to put some color. And I'm just going to dab up in spots to give it kind of a, a little bit of a textured look with the napkin. And that's it. What I will do when this dries better is I will probably splatter it 
I'll just dip my fingers in water, splatter it like this, and then go when it has water on it and um, soak that up to pull more of the color out of the flowers. And then I will probably, oh, on this one, I'll probably not do a script over it. I'll probably just splatter some white on one panel and some black on another panel. It just depends on what I want to do. But that's that's it. It's really, really simple. And um, don't, don't make it hard. Um, sit down. Uh, encourage yourself to say, I'm going to make this in a few minutes' time and see what you come up with. And then turn it into a card. And I would just so love it if you posted it onto my YouTube to show me what you came up with because I love to see other people's ideas on these things. But promise me, you'll just keep it real simple because that's the effect that you're looking for on this card. It's Saturday. It's Saturday before Easter. Um, I hope everyone has a wonderful Saturday and a great day on Sunday as we celebrate Easter. And um, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you soon.